Hello guys, you're welcome to my channel. Today we want to talk about uh, electricity practical, especially for the West African students, taking the ongoing wire. Okay, now let's see how to go about this practical, just like we did when we were talking about uh, the methods in the last class. So today's class now we want to look about what electricity. Okay. Now, this is the psychic diagram. Before I go into the question, I would like to explain everything in this diagram in detail. Now, when you see this symbol, this represents what? A cell. So, just a single cell. So, how will you know? Once what? One pole is longer than the other. It simply means a cell. If the pole are of equal length, then it's going to be a capacitor. Now, this represents what? A key. And when you talk about key, you are talking about what? The switch. What you can use to turn it on and turn it off. Okay? The lines that we have here, they are known as the connecting wires. When you are given an electric circuit like this, or any electric circuit, whatever line you see in that circuit, it represents what? The connecting wires. Now, anywhere you see A like this, this represents what? Ammeter. And uh, when you see V, it represents what? Voltmeter. How not represent a standard resistor? And just how represent a resistor that can be varied? So, in most cases, it used to be what? Resistance box. Just like what this experiment will look like. So, now that we understand our electrical circuits diagram, then we can now go to the main topic of the experiment. Okay, the question here says you are provided with a cell. So here is our cell, and uh, they have of 1.5 volt each. So this is 1.5 volt, this is 1.5 volt. It makes the EMF of this cell to be 3 volts. Okay, and uh, okay, and EMF E, so we have said that EMF E is going to be 3 volts. Key and uh, here is our key. The key also has two terminals, so this terminal one and terminal two. So resistance box R. So this is our resistance box R and the uh, standard resistor R naught. So here is our standard resistor R naught, and the value is just what uh, one ohms. Okay, and uh, we have our voltmeter. Here is our voltmeter, and uh, we have our Hammeter. Here is our hammer, okay, and the other necessary material. So, which other necessary material do we need here? They have the connecting wire, so they are not mentioned here. So, but it is the connecting wire, and you can see that the whole of the what apparatus they have their terminals and the connecting wires are on them, just like this. Okay, so let's move on to the setup. Question 1 says, set up a cycle as shown in the diagram above, leaving the key open. Okay, let's quickly say something there. When a key is open, it means the cycle is an open cycle. And an open cycle is a cycle that there is no flow of current in it. Hence, the switch is off as at that time. So let's quickly do that. Set up what a cycle as shown in the diagram above, leaving the key open. Okay, let's quickly do that. Let's start from here. This is what our standard resistor, so which is this. And it's connected to a resistance box in parallel. So they have to be parallel to each other. This is what? This is the resistor here. So you have to connect this and this together. So when you connect these two together like this. So we have the other side also to be connected together. like this so we are done with this now we have what the standard resistor parallel to the resistance box just like this okay the next thing is that the voltmeter is also parallel to the standard resistor of the resistor box and the voltmeter so here is the terminal of the voltmeter so we have this like this so and the other side of the terminal also will be connected together like this.
okay so we have this now parallel to this and this is also parallel to this now so the next thing now is the wire like this has to be connected to the armature so we connect that to the armature like this so take away the cell so the other end of this armature is going to the positive pole of the battery so we have this here like this okay so we have also going to take the other side of the voltmeter to go to one side of the key here is the key so we have this to join the key here okay so we are done and uh, we are told that we should what the other side of the key is going to the negative pole of the battery just like i have it here so the negative pole of this battery is this place and the positive pole is this so you can put this here like this and this will be here like this so once we have it like this we leave this what open by removing this key so this circuit now is open, no current is flowing in it. Okay, we are done with the Roman figure one. So Roman figure two says what? Set the resistance in the resistance box to two ohms. Okay, but let's quickly finish this now since we are done with the diagram. So if you look at this now, you see that the circuit arrangement is exactly like what we have in the diagram. This is the standard resistor, one ohms the resistance box and the voltmeter, they are parallel to each other and uh, we have what? The ammeter here which is a series down to the cell, this is going to the cell and here is the key, so we are done with the psychic diagram, so let's clean this so that we can take our reading easily okay so the question says what? set the resistance in the resistance box to 2 ohms, so R is equal to what? 2 ohms. So, when we do that, close the key and read and record what? The current R, the voltage, that is the potential difference. Okay? That's what they ask us to do. Okay, let's quickly do that. So, I have to close my key now. Then, I want. I'm going to pick my battery like this now and I'll uh, put this. So there's need for me to set what? To set this resistance in two ohms. So I'm going to remove the two ohms key. So the resistance is currently in two ohms like this. So my reading here now is zero point when resistance R. Okay, let's see. Let's quickly pick the reading. Okay, so I have it to be 0 0.5 and uh, my current is 0 0.2. Okay, so this is 0 0.2 ampere and this is 0 0.5 volts. Okay, so the next thing now is to do what? What's the next thing? Okay. We have record I after closing the key. So the next thing is evaluate what P equal I over V. So our P is going to be I divided by V. So that will be 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.5. So let's get our calculator. So what would this give us? 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.5. So that's 2 over 10 divided by 5 over 10. Hence, this is going to be 2 over 10 times 10 over 5. This and this can cancel. So I'm going to have 0 0.4. Okay, so this is going to be 0 0.4. So since this is ampere and this is volts, so this is going to be ampere per volts. Do we get this now? So if that should be the case, what does the access to do? So we are asking look for R inverse. So our R inverse for the first reading is going to be. 1 over 2 and that is 0 0.5 per ohms so if this should be the case we are done with the first reading so the question now says repeat the procedure 
for four other values of R equal what? 5 ohms, 7 ohms, 10 ohms. So let's quickly do for when R is what? 5 ohms. So when R is 5 ohms, it means we have to return these two. Then we check here, this is 5 ohms. Then we can remove our 5 ohms and what? And set up the cycles again to pick our reading. Okay, so we have our voltmeter to read 0.4 while our ammeter is reading 0.1. So this is going to be I equal 0.1 ampere and our voltmeter is going to be 0.4 volts. Okay, so we quickly do this again. P is equal what? P is going to be I divided by V. And that's going to be 0.1 divided by 0.4. So this is going to be 1 over 10 divided by 4 over 10. Far, far, near, near. So we have what? 10 divided by 4 times 10. So automatically we are having 1 all over 4. So what will this give us? If I multiply this by 25, so that's going to be 0.25. So we have 0.25 ampere per volt. Okay, if that should be the case, what's the next thing? Arrow inverse. So our arrow inverse is going to be 1 over 5. So 1 over 5 will give us what? 0.2 per ohms. So we got that now. So we can go to the next one when R is 7 ohms. So when R is 7 ohms. When R is 7 ohms, so what's going to be our current? So we already have 5 ohms, so we remove 2 ohms. This is 5 ohms, and this is 2 ohms, so I have to remove that. So I have 2 plus this, that's 7. So I have to take my reading, okay? And this will give me 0 0.3. My voltage is 0 0.3, my current is 0 0.04, okay? So my this is 0 0.04 ampere and uh, my voltage is 0 0.3 volts. So I have to take this evaluation again. So that this will my P is going to be 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.03 and my R inverse is going to be 1 over 7. Okay, so this is going to be in per ohms. This is going to be in ampere per volt. So I can go for the next one when R is 10. So when R is 10 ohms, what will be my I and what will be my V and my P, which is I over V and my R in bus. Okay, if that should be the case. Now I'm going for 10. Since I have 10 here, I can return this to now like this. So I'm going to remove this now, and this is just 10 ohms. So I have to take my reading and see what it's going to be. Okay, my voltage now reads 0 0.28. 0 0.28. And uh, my current is reading 0 0.03. 0 0.03. And 0.28. So this is an ampere, this is in volts. So I'll take the ratio again 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.28, and arrow inverse is 1 over 10. So I can go for the next one when R is 12 ohms. When my R is 12 ohms, when my R is 12 ohms, okay, this is going to be yeah, 1 over 10, yes, correct. Okay. okay, when my R is 12 volts, so what should I have? This is 10 ohms, so I'm going to remove 2. So it makes it 12 now, okay? 10 plus 2, that will be 12. Hence, I can take my reading now. So, okay, my voltmeter here is giving me 0 0.2 and my current is 0 0.02. Okay, current is... My voltmeter, this is current I, 0.02 ampere, and my voltmeter is giving me 0.2 volts. So I can evaluate my P 
which is going to be 0 0.02 over 0 0.2 and my arrow inverse which is going to be 1 over 12 okay what is the next thing now okay the next thing now is now this one is going to be in ampere per volts and this one is going to be what in volts in back sorry ohms inverse okay what's the next thing to do now we are asked to tabulate your results okay let's quickly do that so let's quickly tabulate our results and see how the table should look like okay we carry out the experiment how many times that is five times so our serial number is going to be what five so i'm going to have my serial number full of bells so i have this to read from one two three four five Remember, there's no need of putting this in any decimal place. Then the next thing is what? My resistance. So this is resistance. Very important to put the unit in brackets. Then we have this. So the first one is 2 ohms. And the next one is 5 ohms. So no, no, no. There's no need of putting unit here. So you can put this one in one decimal place. Since it is given direct from the question, so you put it in one decimal place. And then the next one is 7. So this is 7.0. And the next one is what? 10.0. The next one is what? 12.0. Okay, what's the next thing then? My current. What is my current? Current I is in ampere. Is that okay? So the first one is, is 0 0.2. Because I took this reading from my meter, I'm going to put it in two decimal words, decimal place. So this one is going to be 0 0.20. Then the next one is going to be 0 0.10. Then the next one is going to be 0 0.04 and the next one is going to be 0 0.03 and my next one is 0 0.02 and uh, the next one which is my voltmeter now, my volt, the voltage is going to be in volts so you can see you have to put it in bracket so this is both in the, the voltage that is the potential difference in what in volts so the first one is 0 0.50 so it also have to be in two decimal place the next one is 0 0.40 and the next one is uh, 0 0.30 and my next one is 0 0.28 and my next one is 0.2 okay so i'm done with that column which other one needs to be there so the next thing is going to be my fee okay so to make it easier so i have my p here my p equal what i divided by v so this is going to be what ampere per volt so we have this my p now the first one is going to be 0 0.4 so because i'm getting this from calculator excuse me let me get my calculator okay so now i'm here with my calculator so because i'm getting this value from my calculator remember is that you put it in three decimal place or you put it in three significant uh, figure so i like doing with three significant figure okay so this one is going to give me 0 0.4 so I'm going to put it as 0 0.400. So this is three significant uh, figure. Okay, the next one is going to be 0 0.25. So it's going to be 0 0.250. And my next one is going to be, okay, let's get the value for that. 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.3. So that will give me 0 0.133. Okay. 0.133 and the next one is going to give me 0.03 divided by 0.28 okay that will be 0.107 and the next one which is the last one is going to be 0.02 divided by 0.2 that is 0.100 Okay, I'm done with my P, then the next one is my R inverse. So this is going to be in Ohm's inverse, okay? So the first one is going to be 0 0.5 because I get it to calculate all the same 
procedure, I'm going to put it a little bit significantly dark. So the next one is going to be 0 0.200. And my next one is going to be 1 divided by 7. So this is going to be 0 0.143. And the next one is going to be 0 0.100. And my next one is going to be 1 divided by 12. And that's uh, 0 0.0833. So, remember, we are dealing with what? Three significant figures. So, this is going to be like this. Okay? We are done with our table now. Remember, there are some constants in this experiment. And what are those constants? Your constant is your R0. So you put it on the table as 1 ohms. Is that taking up? Okay? You might like to put your resistance inverse beside this. There's no quamps. You can put it beside this. It make your easy, it make your reading more what easier. So you can rearrange it as this, that is R, R inverse, then I, then V, then P. Should be the last. It's your choice. And if you are ready like I do, I do it like this because that is exactly the way we carried it out in the experiment. Now, if you watch my table, you see that there's no painting there. There is. Okay? So there shouldn't be anything like painting in your table. So you leave this as this. So you don't shave. Are you getting this now? When you shave, it is minus half. And you have to note your what? Your uh, decimal places, the number of significant figures, they have to correlate because your table takes what? The highest value of your result. And make sure that whenever you are picking reading, your, when you are, whenever you are not picking reading, your key is open in order for the battery not to run down. Is that taken? They are part of our precaution. So, the next thing we have to do now is to plot our graph. So, let's quickly go into that and see how it's like. So, let's go. Okay, we are to plot our graph now. And here is our graph book. Normally, you know, the space in between them is always two centimeters. Though there are some graphs that are not as standard that they used to be what one centimeter. So, it's advisable you draw it like this. So, is that taken? You can see this is what, when I measure it, this is giving me what? Two centimeter. So, let's start to plot our graph. And you can remember the graph said what? If you plot the graph of P against what? R inverse. So, that's going to be the first thing on my table. So, on my table, I'm going to put there normally the title, the title of the title of the graph. So that is the title of the graph. So I'll say graph of what? Graph of P against against uh, R inverse, like this. Okay? If that should be the case now, what's the first thing I'm going to check? Remember, I talked about this when I was discussing how to plot graph. You can find the link in the description box below. And I also said it when I was talking about what the mechanism, that is the number one practical, you can also get the links in the description box below. Okay, now let's see. I'm plotting P on vertical axis and my Haru inverse on the horizontal axis. Remember the rule. According to the Wahek exam, your graph must cover one third of your graph paper, but standard, your graph should cover two third of your graph paper. So at least one third, but standard, two third of your graph paper. So let's check what's the maximum number of P. That is 0 0.4, and the minimum is 0 0.1, 1, okay? If that should be the case, what is the maximum of arrow inverse 0 0.5, and the minimum is what? 0 0.08, okay? If that should be the case, let's see how we can determine our scale. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to count 1, 2, 3 and I'll place my ruler there like this. Remember our convenient scales start from what? 2, 5, 10, uh, 50, 100 and so on. So you don't choose prime number like 3, 4, five, uh, 6, 7, eight nine you don't choose numbers like that they are not convenient so if that should be the case let's see
how we could go about this. So we've counted three, and our maximum on P is 0 0.4, our minimum is 0 0.1. Okay, let's see. If I use 0 0.1 here, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and 0 0.6, this is okay because the space I have left here is not that much. So I can draw my horizontal line here like this. So you don't shade, and if you know you want it to show very well, don't remove your hand from the book, so just return it like that. Are we there? Okay, that should be the case. We are done with that. So we can quickly write under it that two centimeter represents, don't abbreviate, represents 0 0.1 units on vertical axis. Or you say on P axis because in physics we don't have anything like X axis or Y axis. So take note of that. So the next one is to determine what will be our scale on the horizontal aspect. So this is going to be maximum of 0 0.5, minimum of 0 0.08. Okay, let's see. One, two, I'll count that first, then place my ruler there like this. I will not rule yet. So let's try. Well, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, then 0 0.6. So it's okay also. So I can rule my straight line here like this. So can we see this now? Okay, if that should be the case. Let's also write down the scale. Two centimeter represents 0 0.1 units on horizontal horizontal axis like this okay some might want to say that two centimeter represents 0 0.1 unit on both vertical and horizontal axis there's no qualms but in most cases it's always advisable you split your point is that okay so to avoid story that touch okay if that should be the case let's start to plot our graph now okay so i'm going to label my graph now i'm going to call this one 0 0.4 one and this is 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 and 0 0.6 so this is going to be 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 and 0 0.6 so your graph is a vector quantity so you show the direction it's not compulsory but it's necessary okay so what's that quantity I'm plotting on vertical axis? That is my P. And what is the unit of P ampere per volt? Okay. And what's the unit I'm plotting on horizontal axis? That is my arrow inverse. In what? In ohms inverse. Are we together? Okay. Okay. Can we go on now? So we can go now because we are yet to know the value for the small, small lines. Okay, the small, small lines here, they are 10, and we are using 0 0.1 as our what unit. So 0 0.1 divided by 10 will give us 0 0.01. Hence, each small, small line here represents 0 0.01. Please take note of that. Is that taken? Okay, let's see now. The first reading, when our P is 0 0.4, then our arrow inverse is 0 0.5. So let's quickly trace that 0 0.4 down to 0 0.5. So we have it like this. So we have it like this. Okay, can we see that? So the next one is when uh, P is 0 0.25, our R is 0 0.2. So we have 0 0.2 to 0 0.25 so this is 0 0.2 so we count 1 2 3 4 5 so this is 0 0.25 here like this okay our next point is 0 0.13 down to 0 0.14 so when uh, our p inverse is 0 0.13 our arrow inverse is 0 0.14 1 2 3 4 like this and one two three like this so we have this like this okay guys the next point is when uh, is zero point uh, when p is zero point one zero seven and uh, the other one is zero point one okay let us say zero point one like this 
So we have this point here. Okay, the last one is when it is 0 0.1, the other one is 0 0.08. So I'm going to count 1, 2, backward like this to 0 0.1. So this is crazy graph. Wow. Okay, so I can now what? Remember, I will have to place my ruler at the origin first. Okay, it's not picking the point, so I have to adjust my ruler like this so that it can pick three points. So if you look at it now, it's picking this, it's picking this, it's picking this. Correct. So I'm going to draw my straight line like this. Okay, that should be the case. I can square like this. Don't you like you to plot graph like I do? Hmm? It's awesome. I never use cleaner and my graphs are always well. perfect. Okay, that should be the case. The next thing now is to pick our slope. Okay, I can pick my slope from anywhere like I used to tell you. It's not necessary my slope is equal to your own, but it's going to be similar. Hence, I'm going to pick my slope from here because I want a convenient point like this. And I stop here. It's a choice. So... I'm going to draw this one down like this, like this. Okay, so this can be a broken line, like this. Okay, and this one can also be a broken line, like this. So, here is going to be my P2, and here is going to be my P1. So, if this should be the case, Remember my FC. So this one is going to be my change in P. It's not compulsory. I just like to decorate my graph. So it's not designing it. I'm decorating it. So it's going to be beautiful. You know, even if the examiner fails to dash me mark when he see my graph, he's going to like it. So this is change in P. Okay. And this is going to be my, as I have to trace this point down as well. So this will be my arrow inverse two and though the point that we just want cross this is going to be my arrow inverse one so this is my arrow inverse one hence this is going to be my change in arrow inverse like this like this okay so if you have this like this so this will be my change in arrow inverse okay guys the next thing is what is going to be my intercept on the vertical axis as requested by the examiner so then you know this is a straight line now of the graph where this line touches the vertical axis last is my intercept so if you look at it now it is this point here can you see so this is going to be 0 0.01 0 0.02 0 0.03 0 0.04 so my intercept k is 0 0.04 what will be the unit and that is going to be ampere per volt is that taken okay that should be the case now i can look for my slope but i'm not going to calculate slope today because of my time so i'm going to say the change in s is going to be changing p all over changing arrow inverse the only thing i want to show you here is how to get your unit so this is going to be what P2 minus P1 all over arrow inverse 2 minus arrow inverse 1. So I showed you in my last video how to determine this. So just pick it there. Then this is what this one is given as what ampere per foot. And this is what ohms per, per this is per ohms rather. Hence, this is going to be what ampere per volt ohms okay let's quickly do some mathematical fun here my ampere my ampere is the same thing as saying volts per ohms abi so if i substitute that into this place my volt inverse is going to be volt inverse times ampere which is what? Volts over what? Resistance. Abi? Then times what? Resistance. This and this will cancel. This and this will cancel. Hence, your slope does not have what? Units. Because whenever you see what? Ampere per volt times what? Ohms. This is equivalent to 1. 
Hence, this is not going to have what? A unit. Your slope is going to be what? A constant. Do you like this video? Comment, like, and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to share with your friend. Meet you next time.